this is performance when you guys get older. Are we good? We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys uh, for coming. This is our team. This is this is the same turf in Fairbanks, Alaska that I played on in 1993 and 94. I spent two summers in Kenai, Alaska. And I played at Stanford in the summers. I went to Alaska for two summers, um, which were among the highlights of my career. Um, not only for the competition and just spending time in Alaska. Uh, the first time I went to Alaska, I heard I was getting sent to Alaska to play, and I was like, what's that? I'm playing against Alaskans. Like, I didn't understand that people came, college players came from all over the country to play on the teams in Alaska against one another. And a couple teams from the lower 48, which is how they refer to us. Um, I went back a third year. I played on a local team. I was, I was drafted decided to play locally instead of go off to play because the team was going to Hawaii and of course back to Alaska. Um, the Midnight Sun game you guys may have heard of, I pitched in the Midnight Sun game in 95. Lost, I don't know if I got a decision, or I think I got no decision, but we didn't win the game. It was on this field, the same exact turf, the Fairbanks Gold Panthers, Barry Bonds played there. Um, the number of people who played there, as you walk into the stadium, there's pictures of a lot of the players who played there and it's a who's who um, and you, you understand immediately the rich history and tradition of, of, Fair, of the Fairbanks Gold Panthers. This is our team lined up for the national anthem prior to the game. So the reason we're here today, the Berkovich 35 Honors Team, which is what the team that I'm running next summer is going to be called, that you guys are recruits for that team. Um, the 20, 2020 Alaska trip, to be or not to be. So the reason we're here is for me to share with you about what the Alaska trip is and then for us to make a collective decision on if we're going. Um, turn back the clock to December of 2018, which is last year. Jeffrey Heinrich, um, Santa Clara, uh, heritage to Santa Clara. He's credited as the leader of the Alaska movement a year ago. Um, two years ago, so in the past Head First Head teams, we had collegiate level teams, which were the Berkovich 35 teams. Um, I, I ran those teams. My jersey number is 35, so I switched back down to the 13 and 14 year old level for several years. Last summer, was it was it last winter, was anybody on the trip, the perfect game trip to SoCal where it rained out, despite it never raining? Okay, um, it was on that trip that I got together with a lot of the seniors and decided, and driving down with Drew Lonsdale, I thought, I think we're gonna bring back a team at the collegiate level or for seniors to play. Because the most important time for seniors is their senior summer. And people were either taking it off or figuring like, I'm just gonna lift and get stronger, I'm just gonna work or different things, and then they get very disappointed when they get to campus. Because your college coaches don't need you to be necessarily bigger and stronger, they need you to be better. But they really need you to be better and bigger and stronger. So for players, they get there's a lot of misinformation out there about what they should do. The key is, after you commit to a college and you know where you're going in fall after your senior year, it's really time to work because when you get to campus, it's a whole new world and there's nothing you can do that can prepare you for it. The other side of that is there's very few people that you can play for that are running a team, including your high school programs, that know how to prepare you or, or who know what's ahead for you. So I thought it's a group I, I really enjoy, the senior summer for you guys, highlight of your career. It's the highlight of your career because it's uh, baseball becomes a business after that. It just does. At the collegiate level, it becomes business. It's at that point there's still some innocence to it. It's the end of your of your career as kids. Like 12U was the end of a career for you guys. Uh, so if you went to Cooperstown, who who went to Cooperstown? How many guys went to Cooperstown? Anybody hit a homer in Cooperstown? Okay. I've actually never been to Cooperstown yet, but I understand that to be like the pinnacle of the of the adolescent experience for baseball uh, and things at 12U are romantic and fun because you're the big kid on a small field still, then you, the game changes as you go into 13, 14. Now, you, if you've mastered that, then you have to master the big diamond. You guys are high talents, so you figured out how to master the high school circuit or master 18U, 17U, and or 16U baseball. Now there's a whole other world ahead. Um, so this becomes a very fun summer because up until now, You've had academics, you've had different types of camps, showcasing, and a lot of stuff like that throughout your whole career. Your senior summer is different because there's not the academic pressures and stressors. It's a time of transition where you are going away, and it's a time where, to me, it's the most important time, even if you're not playing college baseball, to have fun and play with your friends and play the game that you've loved for a long time. 
Um, so a year ago, Jeffrey Heiner, so as we created this team at the 18U level, senior class graduates, the next question is, what do we do? Where do we go? What's the thing that we would do? Um, and then we pitched out different ideas, Heinrich, throughout Alaska. And he and I was crazy enough to go, there you go. Like, that's an idea. Like, if, you got, if you're serious, and then another guy kind of came in and wanted to go, and I was like, I'm going to try to make it happen if we're serious about it. Are we serious about it? It was very casual. I, there's no way in the world I thought it was going to work. Um, I made some calls in Alaska, and it ended up that we had an opportunity possibly to go. So we had a meeting and said, are we serious about this? Do parents and players, do we, want, do we really want to pursue it? I, don't, I know what it was like as a player 100 years ago. I don't know what it's like now, but I will pursue it and try to make it happen if we're serious about it. But if not, it's, it's not going to be worth it for me to do because we'd, we'd have to have buy-in. Uh, they were serious about it. We had an opportunity to go. Um, so once we had the opportunity to go to Fairbanks, Alaska, and again, there's also Anchorage, there's Kenai, there are several different cities where baseball um, goes on in the summer. The key for the Fairbanks, um, for the Gold Panners, is that they're not affiliated with the Alaska Baseball Federation. In other words, they're not playing the other teams anymore because of some internal issues. I'm not exactly sure all of what they are. So there's opportunity for a team from the lower 48 to, to go in and play them. Um, we had a decision last year. We had the Alaska meeting. We decided to make a run at it a year ago. So the Alaska trip in 2019, first of all, we didn't know, like, our flight's going to be $1,200? Or, like, is it going to be a, like, are the finances going to prevent us from going on the front side? Is it more? Is it less? We had no idea at the time. As it turns out, the flights are around 600 bucks to, to go there. Not super high, not super low. Um, free lodging in dorms at the university. So you guys would stay two to a room, and then in the same suite would be another two of you. So again, this is not for high school senior graduates. It's for collegiate programs who are coming through. So mommy and daddy are typically not making the trip because you are a collegiate team that's in Alaska who's going to stay and play against another Alaskan team. Your parents aren't staying in Alaska for the whole summer as you're there for the whole summer when you're a college player. So it's, not, it's designed for, you, for an older group, which to me is the perfect sample set for you guys to experience what it's like to be a college baseball player and also to just be a college student because you have to do your own wash. Um, as we arrived there, we arrived at like 2 in the morning. It's still light out. Um, the bus, our team bus comes to get us. We travel around by bus. We go directly to Safeway before we go to the dorms. So you guys are like pushing around shopping carts and they have lists and they're trying to figure out what do they buy and getting all the wrong stuff and some of the right stuff and, and that is part of growing up. Um, they're, they're doing their own wash. There's not a charge to it. The wash was free. Um, again, two to a room, four to a suite. Hopefully you hook up with someone who can cook because that, that's a premium. Really the way it went is there's like dorm suites right next to each other. So it's like, oh, um, person X can cook. We're all gonna go to his room. And then there'd be big old parties at their room um, and they'd have tons of food and make food. And, um, but also they feed us after each game, provide a team bus. Um, the, the food after the game was really good. There was more than you could ever want which means you would have leftovers and bring home, except for what happens when you bring, you eat a bunch after the game, you bring the leftovers home, it's free, it's good, and then you eat that the next day, but then what are you having that night? The same food, because it's fresh and after park. So then you go, I'm just gonna, no, I, I'm not gonna take another burger or hot dog or brisket sandwich or whatever home because um, then you, because you, you end up eating it all the time after the games. Still. Very cool to be fed after the games. It's a post-game spread for us. Um, we had a six-game set against the, the Fairbanks uh, Gold Panthers last year. Absolutely amazing experience for us. There were 1,200 people at the first game. Um, I put just bombs in general on there. There's one guy, the ca a catcher they had. He's probably going to be drafted. He's got to be drafted this year. Um, we would go to the gym. We would go to the gym all the time. So the team bus would take us to the gym, and we would do like plates of our guys are doing like maybe 45s or maybe 245s and big, huge, strong college guys from the Gold Panthers were in there. And then you look and go, oh, it's a whole different kind of strength and whole different kind of weightlifting. And they don't have to go there. Like they're not being supervised to have to go to the gym, but they want to be better in their baseball career. They've already had a year or two or three or four of college under their belt. So they understand like I'm, I'm working at a different level, which promotes you guys and forces you to understand 
what it's all about before getting to campus. But one guy hit a ball so flipping far. Um, he, he was at University of San Diego, or he was at he was at UCSD. He hit 14 bombs last year at UCSD, and we're facing him. And we threw a good on a changeup. He hit the ball like 100 feet over the center field fence. Um, we go. They're nine inning games, all wood bats. We go pregame batting practice. Um, it's it's a real deal. It's it's on. It's something that you've never done before. Um, and that's the value of it in my mind. By the way, as I tell you about it, I'm telling you because it's an exciting opportunity. I'm not necessarily for or against it though. So my point is to provide the opportunity and say, what do we want to do? Here's an opportunity, if not this, then something else. Um, but first I go, since we have the opportunity, I want to share with you. Happy Boy, does anybody know the song Happy Boy? You, after going, you would wish that you never would hear it again. Um, their seventh inning stretch, they, they sing the song Happy Boy. Um, they have a mascot that comes out and dances Happy Boy. And it's every time the whole crowd gets into it, they have gazoos and like it's a thing. Like it's really a thing and um, you, you don't forget it. And like you're singing it the whole time there because you can't get it out of your head and on the trip home. And like it's, it's a thing. So I just had to put it up there. Um, the experience is great overall, very high level of competition. That's an understatement. Um, it is relentless competition. Um, the team that we played when we went there was very good. On top of that, they played like A plus baseball, meaning like in the first two or three games, they threw us out like four times at the plate. Super rare to, be, to throw someone out at the plate. Two outs, a guy on, wood bats, base hit, I have to send them. Um, so of course a guy comes up with a rocket, like no bounce, no nut, on the money, and over and over again, I'm like, who are these guys? I'm getting booed from the fans and heckled as a coach for keep sending my guys into outs. And that's the fun of it. And again, super high competition, and um, that's part of the value of it. So after the trip last year, fall of 2019, I spent my time pleading, begging, and reasoning with the GM of the Gold Panthers to try to get a second chance. And it was very clear to my group last year, our goal is to go and be competitive enough and gain the respect of, of the GM of the Gold Panthers so that the next group of us, the 2020 grads, would have an opportunity to go. Um, and that was, that was a point for me. And it is the same this year. So I didn't know if we would have the opportunity to go. We were respectable in terms of professionalism. We did everything right. We didn't play a baseball. They did. Didn't go our way in terms of wins or losses. Um, but still, we, we had a lot of talent. And that was, it was clear that we have good baseball players who went about things the right way. Um, just It was my first time going back there since I played there. So for me, it allowed me to go, oh, this is what it's about. As I return, I need to load. I need to be loaded, and I can't come back with a group that's less than loaded, or else there's not value to go. Um, I had to give the assurance of a better squad in 2020, so that the games are going to be more competitive. Um, I started uh, sprinkling the seeds with players, senior standouts like yourselves, uh, as well as current college players, former players in our program, um, players that I've met. Just sprinkling the seeds of opportunity to go back to Alaska to play and also with college coaches. And I mentioned with college coaches because of the showcases we do where we talk to a lot of coaches, sharing with them what the opportunity was and if they might have a stud arm or a stud something to come back and, and make the trip a better one in 2020. Um, so here we are in December of 2019, we have the opportunity to return to Fairbanks. So um, the GM has allowed it to be the case with some stipulations um, like we better be loaded. Um, if we are not loaded and we go back, and it doesn't go well, we never, there's no opportunity to go back again, which puts the premium and the seriousness on to go this year, we're going to win and we have to win. And we have to perform at the highest level we can. Um, that's just what it is, that's the business of it. Because they, again, the public is going to pay to watch the Gold Panthers, which is the home team, which is their bread and butter. Um, they're paying for concessions and they have business through it and they're buying beer and heckling the players and they, they love going to the games. So the production value of what happens on the field has to be high. And the production value of what happens on the field is you guys against them. And it has to be on, it has to be a good competition. Um, 
a four-day set in the middle of July is what the trip looks like this year. Again, last year was a there was a, there was a hole in their schedule for five games, which ended up being six. And what he said this year is there's an opportunity for a four-game set, um, which I I have agreed to pending the opportunity pending the the agreement of our organization. Um, basically, it would be a flight out. So we would have a day off on the front side. Then we would have a four-game set, and then we would leave the night of the fourth game and hop on a plane and be back. Um, there could be opportunity of going to another city and doing like a tour of Alaska. Now, the size of Alaska, and when we say a tour of Alaska, um, it's not like go, like oh, going from uh, Pleasanton to Twin Creeks or something like that. Things are very far in Alaska. Part of the value of going is you can't duplicate the experience and time spent, the people you meet, and the landscape, and all of what Alaska is, and that's part of the value. Uh, touring Alaska, going to another place to play, Fairbanks is much more north than Anchorage, for example, which let's call it eight hours, and I played like another eight hours in Kenai. So the opportunity of going from Kenai to Anchorage to Fairbanks wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, it's going from San Francisco to Oakland to the Bay, it wasn't, it's not what it is. It's very far and long trips, so we would have to explore, even if there is opportunity to play somewhere else, we'd have to look at the feasibility of if it would make sense for us. At a minimum, um, and again, there's opportunity for possibly another another day off to do more things in Alaska. Um, so right now, what I'm doing in meeting here is educating you guys about what the opportunity is, what it looks like. After that is gathering commits. Um, again, do, do we make a run at it or not? And a run at it means a serious run. That's the only kind there can be. Or if it's not that level of commitment and understanding what it is, then no, then it's better not to do it. Um, at that point, we need to plan, we need to recruit, prepare, and we need to win in Alaska. Um, and now is decision time. Um, we choose to go or decline if we don't have high enough talent. Assuming we did go, assuming we were going to pursue the Alaska option, we would then continue to improve and prepare for college recruiting and commitments, which is the pathway that you're currently on. So for a senior in winter, um, now's, now's the time to press on the gas and figure out how to keep making relationships and figure out what, those, what happens with those relationships relative to commitment in the spring and or summer, because you're going to end up on a campus in the fall somewhere playing baseball. The, the question then be, just becomes the pursuit of when and how. For people who have committed early, maybe this applies to them. You never know what happens. Or you've already figured it out, and now is the time to work harder than anybody because now the expectation is that you're going to get to campus and be able to contribute right away as a freshman. Um, you decide which campus you're going to be on for next fall. Then it comes to excelling at a high level in, during the high school season to end strong. Um, high school senior year of high school, again, it's a rite of passage. It's a wonderful, fun time to play. Um, you're all going to go and try to win the NCS championship, which Del Sal will probably win again, um, which is not fun or nice or anything, but that's, that's just how it goes. Um, at that point, then, you prepare for the summer, which is the very last time that baseball is romantic rather than business. And to me, that's a very um, important phase. Again, um, during the summer, there's there's it's high workload, but the other side of that is the other side of that is you guys um, playing for fun and being kids again, playing with your friends and and being able to compete um, somewhat locally, staying at home. As you go to campus next year, probably you don't have the option after that. Probably you're going to be placed <coughs> on a team that might be playing in the middle of nowhere where you don't know people, or coach doesn't really like you, and you're back up in your position, not getting play time, and that's just reality. And if, and if that happens, and, and then you felt bad for yourself, and it's like, shoot, that's, that's just how, that is the norm of how it goes. And then you work yourself within that. What we're providing <coughs> is opportunity where you're liked, wanted, needed, relative to going to win, and you're gonna be in the mix. And as you're not performing well, it's not, you're, you're now not in the mix or not in the lineup, it's, well, we're not bringing in a bunch more people, it's you and only you, so we need to figure out how to get you better because we have to win. Um, the summer of 2020, playing college games. So in general, as a team, we play college games against teams that are comprised of college players. Um, we're, this is not in reference to Alaska. This is also in reference to locally. So again, the, the model of tournament baseball 
is something that's going away for you guys. You have very few tournaments left in your career. Um, you have grown up playing, probably liking and loving and excelling in tournaments. Then after that, as you go forward and play, it's nine inning games, wood bats, um, college programs where guys are going to the bar afterward and or before, um, and it's guys from all over the place that you don't necessarily know or like, um, like with coaches that some of whom are good, some of whom are not so good, and that's what that's the college baseball scene, um, and it's a grind and it's hard work and it's expected that that's what it is, which is fine. That's what it is. We're going to jump into that circuit and dabble with it so you guys get a taste of what that looks like, while keeping the the romantic side of playing in some tournaments because you guys are young enough to. So you're starting to transition. We're going to do some tournaments. Um, probably the last time you guys end up doing tournaments in your life um, because as you get older, there aren't tournaments anymore. Um, but we're also going to, so we're going to, as I created this team or brought it back a year ago, I thought we're going to do both. We're going to do some college stuff and then we're going to do some tournaments. Uh, we will do, end up doing a Reno trip. The purpose is to have fun in Reno hang out with your friends, go and get in trouble, not too much trouble, but appropriate trouble, and purely to hit bombs, because of the altitude and the ball flies in the, in the summertime. So we're literally, would we, do we want to win? Sure, uh, we'd rather win than lose, but we need to get offense, we need to generate offense. Again, in my mind, we got to get the offense going, get confidence high so we can hit in Alaska, because it's, it's a whole different world. Um, we want to play a cool schedule. I use the word intentionally, not flippantly, um, a cool schedule that you help create. In other words, if there's something that you would want to do, for example, who's played at Borman Field in Yachtville, the Veterans Center? Has anybody played there? Where the, the veterans go and um, they, they love, they have beer, they serve beer at the field, and they, um, it's a beautiful place to play. It's rated in Baseball America as one of the top places to play in the country. And it's, beautiful. it's in Yachtville, which is along in the wine country. The veterans go, who've served our country, some of whom many, many, many years ago, and they, by the third inning, they've had some drinks, and they're kind of heckling both teams and each other, and like announcing, and words are slurring, and it's just, it's fun. It's a rite of passage, so I go, shoot, we gotta go there. So I'm connected with them. We went there last year, as, other, as well as other cool venues. So there, there would be a reason we would play at any and all of the games that we play, um, including if you guys knew, or I would ask you, is there anything you guys want to do? Like, it's, this is your last time. It's your last time going through this. You're not going to have decisions after that. You end up getting placed, and they make all the decisions for you. So I would look and say, if there's anything you want to do or have always wanted to do or ask around if somebody's doing something that is cool in, for, for us to do, let's do it, and let's pursue it. Um, also, it's a chance to put finishing touches on college recruiting and exposure. Um, in other words, the team will do some showcasing, so that some showcasing will be relevant for a lot of you guys. Um, we had a player last year who was not was a commit to as a walk-on at a Division I school, decommitted, was committed to a junior college, which commitment to a junior college is always kind of, it's not really a commitment to a junior college, it just means you're deciding to go to one, which you can decide at the last minute to go to any other. He decided to go to, go to one, it wasn't going to work out well for him just logistically, so he decided to go to another. Um, after playing the whole summer, um, after we came back from Alaska, um, Loyola Marymount was needed his position and called around and um, he wasn't a follow really uh, for them, even through his whole senior summer. Um, ended up going on scholarship to Loyola Marymount. He's there now. Uh, they need his position. And there are needs, this happens. It, that doesn't happen all the time, this getting a division one scholarship at the very end of the summer, but coaches having needs and knowing it late does happen all the time something that's relevant for you guys to know. The, the schools that you want to go to right now, they don't know their needs because they're in December right now. They really won't know them in January. They might have a pulse and go, I don't know if this guy can quite play the position that we want him to in the season. February and March, they start to go, we don't have any pitching. Like the guys we thought were going to be able to throw, they show fear and walk guys and back down when the game, when the lights come on, they can't do it. We need to recruit more pitching. We didn't know that two months ago. Now, who are the seniors that are available? Um, and the same in each position. So all the schools end up trying to find out who becomes available at that point. So again, college exposure for you guys is a relevant thing next summer as well as the spring. Um, and then the, the last part of, of the summer is being prepared for Alaska, which will be the most, most fun and most difficult 
baseball experience of your career so far. So part of the goal for us is using the different things to point toward that. That becomes the World Series. It becomes the NCS Final. That we know that we're going to be in the NCS Final, um, or for a current college player, it becomes their national championship. To where it's pointing towards something where we have to be with our A game by that point. Um, so the rest of the summer points up to that point of trying to be with our A game so we can compete at that high level. We can, we can hit turn that off now. And then we can answer questions.